590 KXSP Omaha's ESPN Radio. It's time for the Front Stretch. Brought to you by Joe's Carding and Council Bluffs. Online at joescarding.com. Well, thank you for joining us. This is the Front Stretch, presented by Joe's Carding on AM 590, Omaha's ESPN Radio. Located in Council Bluffs, Joe's Carding is where you get to for fast-paced white-knuckle racing. I swear it's the easiest thing to get to. You're heading east on I-80, right? Yep. And you see that lovely bridge that Council Bluffs put up with the... The, the junk bridge. The, the whatever, like, gang symbols that's <laughs> supposed to be corn or yeah. whatever, the... the, the, the the, the decorations they put up there, and I, I love the fact that my city spent the taxpayers' dollars on that. But anyways, you get off on that, and you head north, okay? You go north for about, what, mile, mile and a half? Maybe the road something like that, The road curves yep. around, past the KC's, goes past the YMCA, and then you're going to see the Horseshoe Casino, and you're going to see all these beautiful businesses, and then there, like a bowl of, of gold at the end of the rainbow, is Joe's Carney. And you will yep. hear... Oh, a little bit because you have arrived at the best racetrack in Council Bluffs. It makes all your dreams and wishes come true. And I'm going to back that up with facts. It is the best racetrack in Council Bluffs. Oh, obviously. Hands down. Oh, hands down hands best down. racetrack in Council Bluffs. Just cut the BS, Dan. <laughs> you turned a 25 second lap time finally. Dear Lord. I'm so happy about that. I cut my time down to 25 seconds. But get to Joe's Karting today. Find out what we've been talking about all year. Fast paced white knuckle racing. Joe's Karting.com. Online. Joe's Karting with a K.com is where you get all the information guys let's get this show underway because so far it's been nothing but a daytona 500 run into the run into the uh the jet dryer kind of a day there you go uh turn four we're going to talk with andrew kaziski for the infield report he's going to talk about his favorite driver brad kozlowski one at dover I, I know you sent me a text message right away yay brad and you know what? It wasn't yay, Brad, at all. <laughs> there was a couple of four-letter words in there, but yay was not in there. Uh, so we're going to talk to him about the implications for uh, Brad winning, how the chase has, has kind of molded a little bit, and we're also going to talk about some of these drivers that have elected to not run in the Nationwide Series this year. Is that having an effect on their 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 cup performance? Because, well, we'll talk about that in turn four as far as what we feel. Uh, in turn three, we're going to sit down with Shaylee Bain. Shaylee, driver of the 03 Go-Kart and 03 Mini Sprint. Shaylee, thanks for joining us. Thank you. How are you doing this morning? Oh, I'm here. I'm You're alive. Here. That's about all we can ask <laughs> on a Sunday morning. We appreciate all of you joining us. In turn two, the Fast Five, five stories that are dominating the NASCAR world. But before we get to all of that, to get to Auto Connection in Lincoln, 21st and P Street, winter is knocking. It came quick. It seemed like just yesterday when my air conditioner had been on for three straight weeks and I was doing nothing but just laying around trying not to generate any kind of heat. It was ungodly hot and all of a sudden we've switched to this beautifully cold weather. I love I think it's great outside. I love cold weather. I, I love the it. fall. I hate it. When you're only 110 pounds, Dan, it sucks. That's true. I got, I've got plenty of insulation to go around. So The Auto Connection in Lincoln is where you get to 21st at P Street to get your car the once over it needs. Get it serviced to make sure everything's in proper working condition so you don't have any unexpected breakdowns on the side of the road. Maybe your transmission, if you have a Dodge uh, truck, would it just go on you every couple of weeks or, or stuff like that drive so, shaft anything it, well anything it could be anything for a dodge i mean really anything for a dodge but get to auto connection link it's 21st and p street 402-477-8200 how about we actually talk about some racing oh what's finally. the point <laughs> I, I haven't found no interest in it yet uh hamlin grabs the pole uh we talked about it last week how Hamlin seems to have a, a rough time at Dover, and, and he was very confident walking into the race on Sunday that he had a good car, even walking into practice, that uh, Darian Grubb had set him up with a great car, and uh, and obviously he did. Grabbed himself the pole, leads the first 34 laps, but is overtaken by teammate Kyle Busch, who uh, I think hands down had the best car. For once. I mean, he actually had a, a good car. I mean, there's nothing breaking down. He doesn't have too many uh, problems, but, you know... Uh, well, he did have problems. Listen, it's, it's one thing to have the best car, but it's another thing to win the race. That is 100% true. And, I mean, Kyle Busch is still the best driver. It, just think if he's if he was in the chase. What uh, He did break down. I lied about that. So take that statement and erase it. Yeah, but if last he was week in it, the chase, he's been dominant. I mean, every single race, he's been the fastest car, I believe, besides last week, Hamlin was And faster. I'm glad you brought that up. This is the seventh time in a row that Kyle Busch has led the most laps and not brought home the victory. How frustrating is that for a driver? And it's not like he led just over the the largest amount. He led 302 of 400 laps. 
three hundred and two just of four hundred laps, and he's got to come in on lap uh, I think what twelve to go and and splash and top off on fuel because he didn't have the the uh, fuel economy to get there and. Uh, guys who led laps uh, had good cars. Uh, Jimmy Johnson led for 43 laps. Denny Hamlin uh, led for a total of 39. He had the first 34, but then uh, picks up five extra laps between uh, pit changes and uh, in, or, or green flag pit stops. Other drivers who gained bonus points, uh, Gordon Boyer, uh, obviously Kozlowski and Johnson. Uh, Kozlowski gets the win with uh, the extra bonus points. And uh, drivers who, I want to say they had a good car, but this was a very odd race. I couldn't believe how many cars went a lap down. And it was because simply because we were in the middle of green flag stops and the cautions come out, which pinned a lot of guys back uh, one lap down. At one point in time, I think we had six drivers on the lead lap. Uh, but we end up going up to uh, as many as 11 after the race gets over with. But uh, other drivers who had uh, a good cars but just had bad luck. Casey Kane had a pretty good car, but again, had to come in and top off on fuel. Uh, Matt Kenseth had a, what looked like be a track bar break and uh, hits the wall. His day's done, and he takes the biggest hit in the points. Uh, See you, Matt Kenseth. And uh, Greg Maybe Biffle had a, Greg Biffle had a good car, but early in the race they didn't get the uh, the tire the lug nut tight, and he has a loose tire. Has to come in and make an unscheduled stop. That puts him three laps down, and it's just impossible to make. It, it, it just seems up. like it's just the little things that are coming back to bite him in the butt. But it seemed to me that you know here in the last couple of races we've seen quite a few cars having to come in with you know three or four. Well, I shouldn't say three or four. You know, maybe ten to twenty laps to go. And Andrew, I want your your uh, answer to this. What do you think is a possibility that with the new fuel injected motors in these cars, is that kind of playing havoc with some of these teams? Well, yeah, because they don't uh, 100% know exactly what kind of fuel mileage they're getting yet. Uh, this is experiment year for these guys, and next year they're going to probably change it up again with the new body style. Um, and this, you know, the fuel mileage thing, it, nothing, it's not an exact silence. It's, no, it's, it's a not. lot like you driving on the road and your fuel light comes on, you wonder, can I make it? home you, you kind of you, you guesstimate you check your your trip meter and stuff like that these guys are running calculators and to be honest with you i'm shocked at how precise they are as it is well they were I close mean, but this week what was it what, what's keselowski's crew chief paul wolf paul wolf he's sitting there and he's telling him hey drive the car back and forth and the reason for doing that it was throwing the slosh of the gas back and forth and i mean that car should not have made it i don't even think he made it to uh, oh, Winter Circle, did he? He he did a, a massive burnout and made it to Winter Circle. He did. Yeah, he sh- he was when they started the run. He was two or three laps short, but he manages in a ninety green flag run. Mm-hmm. He manages to save uh, what I'd estimate probably five laps. Yes, I mean wrapping the engine out doing burnouts isn't the best fuel mileage. So yeah, and and Kyle Busch is they were I think five laps short. And they decided to come in with ten to go. All these guys were banking on that the guys that had to come in and fuel up: Denny Hamlin, uh, Casey Kane, uh, Kyle Busch, Clint Boyer. Clint Boyer. These guys were banking on the fact there would be one more caution before the end of the race, but it just simply didn't happen. Uh, so Kozlowski comes home with the victory. And uh, as much as is the guy irritates me, I got to give it to him. He is the best driver out there right now. Well, it's kind of funny. Last week on the front stretch, I think Dan's actually got a good point. Last week on the front stretch, I was, you know, I was mentioning to you, you know, you got Stewart, you got Johnson, you got Boyer, you, you got these guys that can run up front and be a race winner on any given day. And then you got young Brad. He's arrogant. He's cocky. He's confident. He knows what he's doing. You know, I think it's kind of cool that he's up there mixing it up with these boys when, as young as he is, compared to as old and you know seasoned as these other older drivers are. You know, you could make one little slip up and, you know, you're not winning a race. I, I think his confidence is making up for any oh, any kind of inexperience that he has. Cause, and it's not like he doesn't have a lot of experience. He's been in the cup circuit long enough to know how to run at Dover. The, the, there's, there's one driver I want to mention right here, though, uh, in the points. Clint Boyer. Has it seemed like he's kind of plateaued all of a sudden here in the chase? Oh, you want to talk about plateauing, let's talk about Greg Biffle. Actually, not really a plateau, but a drop. I've never seen someone move so fast. He he was leading in the points for a good majority of the season. When the chase started, you did just like an Acme and weight. And McKenzie both did. They're 12th and 11th. I don't know what's going on with Roush Fenway Racing, but it ain't good. There is a lot of issues going on with that. Well, not a lot of issues, but they're not performing at a chase-capable no. level. 
and we'll have to talk about that another time. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's how Dover wound up. Uh, Brad Kozlowski gets the win. Jeff Gordon comes home second. And this is we talked about it last week. Jeff Gordon came home third last week at Chicagoland, only gained two points on the championship lead. Comes home second this weekend. Uh, at uh, excuse me at uh, Dover and uh, he loses two points on the Chase Championship lead although he gains two positions he's now 10th in points he fell back 48 points behind the leader so I I feel bad for Jeff Gordon because he had an, an, a serious uphill battle to climb, and I heard a stat that if he wins the next seven races and Jimmy Johnson finishes second in every one of those races, Jeff still wouldn't have enough points to beat him. And that's where the other 26 races in the season come into effect. You have got to win. Not just once, not just twice. you got to win three, you got to win four, and then you can actually be a championship contender. But starting into the chase, what was he, uh, nine points behind the leaders, like 12 that. points behind the leaders, and then has that issue at Chicagoland and just kills him. That's, uh, uh, let's see, Mark Martin finished third, Jimmy Johnson fourth, Carl Edwards fifth, Martin Trux Jr. sixth, Kyle Busch uh, brings home a seventh place finish, Danny Hamlin eighth, and Boyer ninth, Joey Logano tenth. Your other chase contenders, Earnhardt finished 11th, Harvick 13th, Biffle 16th, Stewart 20th. He had an absolutely horrible day. There was no time that he was actually a contender. Uh, and uh, Matt Kenseth finishes 35th. And uh, in turn four, we'll talk about Matt's fall in the points. And uh, we'll get to all that. But before that, turn two, fast five, just around the corner. This is the front stretch presented by Joe's Carding on AM590, Omaha's ESPN Radio. This is the front stretch on AM590, brought to you by Joe's Carding, online at joescarding.com. Welcome back to the front stretch. This is Turn 2, presented by Joe's Carding on AM590, Omaha's ESPN Radio, in Council Bluffs on uh, just off 23rd Avenue. It's, uh, excuse me, 23rd Avenue on 30, wait, say it for me, buddy, I'm an idiot. 2121 South 32nd Street. And it's, it's right off 23rd Avenue, right next okay. to the AMC Movie Theater. And then the street is 32nd yep. Ave or Street? 30, 32nd Street. Okay, so... Get over the, it's right next to AMC Theaters, can't Quaker miss Steak it. and Lube. You really can't miss it. Once you get in that area, you'll see the giant red and blue Joe's Carding sign. Quite possibly and, uh, the biggest sign in Council Bluffs. I love that. I love the story behind that sign. We'll have you, to. You've been there before, haven't you? Many times. My picture's on the wall, right by the girls' y- bathroom. Yep. Huh. Right. With my tear off from my helmet. Huh. She's never How beat me. How did you know that? I know. It's your responsibility. It's an to know eight this by stuff. ten Come of her on. army-sponsored mini sprint, and she's tried to race me, and it always ended up with her in the wall, with me flicking a toothpick at her, and then running the other direction, and her yeah. big burly boyfriend come running after me. And that's how she didn't even know who you were when she walked in today. Well, that was a hunk of sh. <laughs> easy now, easy now, easy now. Well, let's get into the Fast Five. Five stories that are dominating the NASCAR world. The first one up, Stuart Haas Racing announces sponsorship for the nerdy 39 team and more. They're nerdy nine. Oh, during a press conference on Tuesday, Stuart Haas Racing announced that they have locked down Quicken Loans as a primary sponsor for Ryan Newman and that 39 team for a total of 18 races next season. That's going to be doubling down on their commitment from what they're doing this year. In addition, Quicken Loans has, will remain as an associate sponsor for the 14 team throughout 2013. Tony also mentioned during the press conference that they are close to locking down Bass Pro Shop to replace some of the 22 races that were left vacant by Office Depot's department. Depo- Office Depot's departure in 2013. So good news for Stuart Haas Racing, getting some sponsorship locked Bass, up. Bass Pro Shop, I think, is a great fit for Tony. I mean, he's been with those guys forever and a day. You've seen him uh, on his sprint cars, you know, on all of his cars in some form or fashion. I mean, you, you go, I go to Bass Pro Shops, and I can't help but think of Tony Stewart. NASCAR is close to a TV deal with 2013 with Fox. I mean, this is kind of like bread and butter, you know chocolate and milk it just goes hand in hand as a sanctioning body tv deals with their three networks is nearing its end fox has been working with nascar well in advance of the contract ending in hopes of locking down a deal before nbc sports is expected to jack up the rate in a bidding war now nbc sports has expressed interest in showing the nascar races but it has mentioned that they will not negotiate with nascar until the current deal has expired i think that's pretty uh pretty fair uh, Fox carries the first 13 races, followed by TNT carrying the next six. ESPN, I think I've heard of those guys. Finish the Yeah, ESPN, I've heard of them. Finish the coverage with the final 17 races, including the chase for the Sprint Cup. It has also been rumored that Speed will undergo a programming change. It will be known as Fox Sports 1 and directly compete with ESPN by covering all sporting events. No word yet on plans for the current programming that Speed covers. couple things here. One, I like the digger cam. Don't 
get i don't care who shows us don't, i like the digger cam and two speed channel is speed now i'm just an idiot i like watch car and drinking beer and whatnot but speed it's stock car racing it's off-road it's motocross i don't need to see a football game or a major league game or well and if you read it polo if you read it carefully they're they're they're, they're getting rid of speed it's going away. It's going to be turning into Fox Sports 1. Yeah, and well, it, I don't care about the name. You know, it, to me, okay, a lot of purists in NASCAR don't think of it as Nextel Sprint Cup. I, I I still look at it as Winston Cup. I was brought around the well, Winston yeah, it Cup. Yeah, has been has been Nextel for 5 years. Well, well Sprint Cup. <laughs> Sprint Cup. Jesus. You know what I'm you know what I'm saying. I tell you the what, Nationwide Series used I, to be the Bush Series. A lot of people still call it that. I don't care if it's EIEIO Monkey Bob channel but to, to get away from the, the racing stuff i mean speed i buy speed channel exclusively on my cable provider just so i could watch the races i don't like i said i don't need to see field hockey and water polo and synchronized swimming well and this uh, it, it's not going to be that it's going to be a, it's going to be a competitor to espn it's going to be college football it's going to be college basketball it's going to be nfl i don't NBA. care for us i want to see no, i want to yeah. see racing we Listen, need... call it what it is you're mad that the speed channel's going away it's going to suck let's oh. face it it's that's what you're that's that's the biggest issue here is that i love the fact that on a saturday morning i can wake up and i can watch late model racing from Podunk, yeah. wherever i mean and you can watch sprint car races world of outlaw races you can watch all these different three, races that we don't get exposure 3 30 in the morning on a saturday and i'm sitting at home in my pjs drinking a bud light watching world of outlaw late models i mean and now fox sports one comes in and i gotta watch some division three double a fourth chapter well, football I, I team guarantee play. you're not going to watch that so no. uh yeah that's going to be unfortunate that if this does happen but it sounds like it's kind of set in stone that it, it's going to happen speed's going to go away now there is no word yet on if speed will just move to another tier if it's going to remain as your speed channel there's going to have all these different racing programming on it but it will just move from where it is at now i'm just hotter than hell you'll be all right bubba J boy <laughs> number three Andrew. newman's crew chief moves to the number 10 car next season yeah i don't like the sound of this tony gibson who was crew chief for ryan newman in the 39 team reports he is now heading over to the number 10 team where danica patrick plans to sit behind the wheel full-time in 2013 as for who will fill gibson's seat on top of the pit box for the for the 39 team is still up in the air according to stewart he says nothing has been decided yet we're talking about different options and trying to evaluate how we can make our program better next year. Asked about the potential change, Newman seemed okay with it. I wouldn't say I would be upset. We have had some success on the track and some struggles. I think a lot of Gibson. Do you and, think he's saying that just because he Tony's his boss, or do you think he's legitimately upset? Newman hasn't run very good. I don't think Hennica's good at all, so I don't have any idea what's going to happen. I, I tell well, you Gibson's, what. Gibson's a veteran crew chief, so it's a good move for Danica. Put somebody on there that... that that knows exactly what what needs to be done. I mean, Tony's not the most winning crew chief, but he's got a lot of experience under his belt. Shayla, you're a big Shayla. Stewart. Shayla, you're a big Stewart. Danica Patrick, you, you were just telling us before we went to air that you follow both. What do you think of this? Danica, I don't think Danica has what it takes to drive. I was listening earlier in the year where you can hear them talking to their pit crew chief. He kept telling her to get closer to the car to draft him, and she wouldn't. And so she backed off like 10, 15 car lengths and she was like, oh, this is much better. But he wanted her to draft. I don't think Danica has what it takes to be a NASCAR. I think she was really good in Indy, though. Do you think it's a bad move for them to take Gibson from Newman after three years of being with Newman? Just to, I mean, don't, I guess what I'm getting at, I kind of see Newman kind of getting shafted here a little bit in, in some ways. You're going to take a, dry, a crew chief that's really good with Newman. And but what's Newman done? He didn't make the chase. What he's do you do? won, uh, what, two or three times? That's it. I mean, yeah, he's a veteran. Danica needs help. Somebody's got to help her. Yeah, I just... I, I, I don't think this hurts Newman I think it's very much. If I was Newman, I'd be well, a little upset. I think we need to wait and find out who they're going to get for Newman, by the way. I mean, there's not a lot of crew chiefs right now that are because they're still under contract through the end of the season that, that Stuart Haas Racing can go and talk to. So they don't... Until you find out who it's going to be, you really can't say anything. I mean, what if they go and pick up... Well, isn't Zippy with Tony right now? Yeah. That's Who's what I kind of wondered if maybe they would move Zippadelli over to run with, run, uh, race with, uh, to be the crew chief for Newman, but it kind of seems like he wants to be more of the competition director than crew chief. Uh huh. 
So, I mean, I don't know. There's a lot of good crew chiefs out there. Tony Uri Jr. and Tony Uri Sr. were both just let go from uh, Earnhardt Racing. So, uh, you never do know. Uh, Phoenix season, Phoenix Racing is set to finish the season without Kurt. Now, we talked about it last week that they could fold shop and not run after Talladega. And I do want to make a, b- a bit of an apology. I-, I-, I got some information this week, and I found out that, from what we understand, when we talked about the car changes from 2013 to 20. 20- 20, 2012 to 2013 that it was basically just going to be sheet metal changes. Now NASCAR has released that they are con- contemplating some uh, weight changes, which would mean you'd have to build brand new cars. So I do want to check say and apologize to Phoenix Racing because going from replacing sheet metal to replacing your chassis and all this different stuff, that would be something that'd make you fold fold your uh, fold the shop up and, and call it a day. But uh, back onto this story. Uh, Phoenix Racing is uh, has announced that they are planning on finishing out the season. Uh, crew chief right now for Kurt Busch. Uh, I lost my place. Nick Harrison said that uh, we're business as usual moving forward. Harrison also said that we still have Talladega with Kurt and we really think we've got a car that can end up with a win. We're running the full season. It's just a matter of who's going to be driving. Harrison said that Phoenix Racing has spoken with Regan Smith, who is the driver that Kurt Busch has taken over for at Furniture Row in the 78 car, and they are interested in having Regan Smith come. They also mentioned that James Finch has been interested in recently reinstated driver A.J. Allmendinger, as well as David Rudiman. Now, Rudiman filled in in Pocono when Bush was suspended for that week. Andrew, I think you and I talked about it. We didn't really imagine A.J. Allmendinger would ever be back in the in the Sprint Cup circuit. I didn't think he'd ever be back in NASCAR. I, I think he's going to go back to open wheel and, and I thought I mentioned, have his success I thought, there. I thought he'd be back in NASCAR. Here's what I'm interested in. You go with Dinger or Rudiman, Andrew? Rudiman. Well, yeah, I go you're with special K. I'm going Dinger. I go with Rudiman. I'm going with Dinger in a heartbeat. I'm going to fling a toothpick at somebody. Let her burn her boyfriend. I'm sorry. As far as I'm concerned, and the thing that kind of is icing on the cake as far as A.J. Allmendinger is concerned, he was at Penske Racing for how many races, and he didn't do anything. He had one good finish. Well, he got a fourth, I think, didn't that he? One good finish. <laughs> That was it. Now, David Rudiman has not been in a top-tier organization, so if it was me making the call, I'd say, well, I'd say Rudiman over A.J. Allmendinger. So, we'll see what happens. Uh, buddy, what about the scraps? We've got some uh, kind of bits and pieces here. Well, uh, Ambrose, uh, he's a good old boy. Uh, he's close to resigning. Just talk normal, <laughs> would you? God, Ambrose set to re-sign with Richard Petty Racing to stay behind the wheel of the nine. Yep, Edwards makes his uh, 600th career NASCAR start. 294 in cup, 246 in nationwide, and 60 in truck. That's an impressive I career. I think he is the 40th person wow. to do that. You know, 40th person to do that, but still, when you look at history overall and you see how many people have raced NASCAR, I mean, that is no easy He's people. got a long way to go, too, still. Oh, yeah. yeah. A lot of racing left uh, for that guy. Pat Trison, he heads over to BK Racing. Uh, reports uh, are out that Sadler is uh, getting closer to securing the deal with Joe Gibbs Racing. We had talked about that last week. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gibbs, uh, as in Joe Gibbs, looking to extend Kyle Busch's contract, but Bush wants to wait until the season is over to talk. Yeah, I think they're talking now. <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, I don't know. I, Kyle Busch wants to wait and see how he no, does the last yeah. couple of races, but maybe it would be it would behoove Kyle to do it now. Here's something interesting. NASCAR is thinking of moving qualifying to Fridays and relaxing their testing rules in 2013. I, I like the fact that they're relaxing their testing rules and letting the teams you know, go about their merry way, going to different tracks and testing some new stuff out. I yeah, like as, that. As it is right now, uh, teams cannot test on tracks that NASCAR is scheduled. Now, they do do special tests, tire tests, on tracks that have um, have been repaved or redesigned. So you'll see a lot of that. This year we saw Michigan. We've seen Kansas. We'll see all these different tracks that they, they do tire testing on to make sure that Goodyear has the right tire compound. But other than that, they're not allowed to go and test at Talladega on a weekly basis. Um, and they're talking about allowing each team four tracks to pick from maximum of four tracks and i kind of like this because the idea behind not letting teams test is that hendrick would go and test at every track and spend as much money as they possibly oh, yeah. could as to where someone like phoenix racing front row motorsports those guys can't afford to do it so it was nascar's way of saying let's keep the field even let's 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 make it so that not the richest teams can afford to be the best teams well, out why, there what if nascar said okay you got the top tier team obviously right now is hendrix Okay, you guys, we'll let you race four tracks, or we'll let you go out, I'm sorry, test four tracks. But then you got the up and coming teams, your Finch Motorsports. Hey, we'll, we'll give you six tracks. 
I, the kind of that's, levels out that's, the playing that, field. But that's it, dicey. I mean, then you're talking about who's who's a less fortunate team. Front Row Motorsports, Phoenix Racing. Is You're starting to... You still got to follow the rules. It's just like, here, we'll give you a 100-pound weight break because you guys are terrible, but we're going to add 100 to these guys because they're so fast. It just, it, I don't think it's right. Yeah, and it, it, I mean, not not a bad idea, but I, I, I think you're starting to open up too many too many variables when you do that it's four tracks and that's it now what's interesting is i heard reports that they would that like hendrick who's got a, a an agreement with phoenix racing was to say okay hendrick hendrick motorsports decides we're going to go test the talladega martinsville uh dover and chicago land well phoenix how about you guys go and test at four different tracks and we'll pay for it and oh, you yeah. share the information. We'll share the the eight track information between the four of us. So that could be one way that that they start. It's it's so funny how NASCAR leaks these little ideas, and it's already out there that teams are thinking of ways of hitting that gray area. <laughs> well, what about this gray area? You got Jimmy Johnson, you know, driving uh, Jeff Gordon's car. Jeff why, Gordon, why car would owner. He do that. Oh. Okay, I see what you're saying because yeah, Jeff, so you, Jeff is part owner of the 48 car. Yeah, so I mean, in really, with the way I read that rule, Hendricks has how many cars again total? Five. I was thinking the same thing you're Five. going on right here. Yeah, so I'm like, you could take the uh, four, four cars, me. four cars, There's split them up. Sixteen tracks. No, yeah. no, 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 no. That that is one thing they brought up. No, it's it's four tracks per organization. Okay, I, we and, were thinking along the same lines. I go, that'd be yeah, pretty I, smart. I yeah, thought well, that it, too, because I thought, well, that's not very fair, because then some teams have one car, and they can only go to four tracks, but other teams, I mean, they could hit half the tracks. That's why I had mentioned yeah. the deal with, you know, Hendricks, you yeah. only get four, you know, Finch, let's let you have six tracks. Yeah, so... um uh, yeah, so that that's some interesting stuff, and there's a lot of stuff that's coming out right now as far as testing and, and different rule changes as far as NASCAR. Stuff. How did, how nice would it be if we could test on dirt tracks? That'd, That'd be, be pretty awesome. tough. Awesome, I'd be out there all the time. I thought you guys <laughs> could go test at dirt tracks. Like no. you guys, you guys can't go out there and go test it at like I80. No, their proper track preparation would kill us. That's true. That's true. Good point. All right, didn't fully think out that whole contemplation. Let's move on to turn three and. Dear God, hopefully we can keep this show rolling in somewhat of a good direction. We're going to talk with Shaylee Bade coming up next. Driver of the 03 Mini Sprint in the 03 Goat Card. Stick to it. It's the Front Stretch here on AM590, Omaha's ESPN Radio. You're listening to the Front Stretch on AM590, Omaha's ESPN Radio. Brought to you by Joe's Carding and Council Bluffs. Online at joescarding.com. Welcome to Turn 3 on the Front Stretch, presented by Joe's Carding and Council Bluffs, located at 23rd Ave, next to AMC Theaters and online at joescarding.com. That's Carding with a K. Get to Joe's today, get yourself some fast-paced white knuckle racing where the only speed restriction is how fast you are. And make sure you guys pay attention to not only our Facebook page, but we're going to talk about this in the coming weeks. You got the holiday horsepower scheduled, and we're going to get you guys all that information. I, I wanted yep. to make sure we talked about that. Maybe we can try to get to it in Turn 4 if we've got some time. But we want to get out the information to the holiday horsepower drive. It's a great thing that Bud does each and every year. And I believe, Shaylee, are you going to be a part of it this year? The race with the drivers? Yeah. Yep. I was going the to. The racing with the stars. Yeah, I was going to, and then I was telling my mom and dad about it. And... You were intimidated because I'm going to be a part of it, right? Yes. Okay. Very. I thought so. Absolutely. I could see it in her eyes. <laughs> I could see it in her I don't come back from Hawaii until the 6th. I wouldn't blame you. And uh, so I was actually going to try to get a flight to come home the second. He yeah. was going to pick me up at the airport, and I could be here by the fourth. Yeah. But there's no tickets. Yeah, out. I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it. Don't do it. Stay. Oh, I, I was going to do it. Wow, that's. Uh, but dedication. I definitely want to do it next year. Well, we're, we're sitting right. here talking with. Shaylee I might, I might next pencil year. you in for next year. Please. We're, we're talking with Shaylee Bay, driver of the O3 uh, Sprint Mini Sprint and uh, Go Kart. Shaylee, thanks so much for sitting down with us. Oh, this will be interesting. We're going to keep it uh, somewhat, uh, I, you know what, no, I'm not even going to say it, because I think we all know it's going to get pretty bad in here. Uh, let's start off with the easiest question. What got you interested in racing? My dad. My dad brought me into the whole thing. Was your dad a racer before? Nope. I was his guinea pig. I have. <laughs> he just woke up one morning and said, Shayla, Shayla, we're going to go race. That's exactly how it went. He goes, we're going to go check this out. And I was like, okay. So me and my dad drove to Nebraska City Raceway when that was still a track. And he put me in a car, put my shoes on, put my neck brace on, told me this is go, this is stop, and sent me out there. How'd you do? Oh, I hated it. <laughs> I absolutely hated it. <laughs> I got, as soon as they threw the green flag, by the time the other cars came around for their second lap, I haven't even made it a full lap. So I got lapped before my first lap. Oh, wow. So you went day in speed. 
Oh yeah, I, would, I was going nowhere. <laughs> Are you sure you can't come to the Racing of the Stars? <laughs> I need. I want. My goal is to finish in front of at least one person. Well, we can go. But we'll then go. again, I'm pretty sure you've gotten a lot better. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. You wouldn't. You wouldn't really be sitting here talking with us if if you couldn't finish a race. So, uh, well, let's talk about that. How many markers do you have in the W column, and, and what all have you won? Oh God, we got a bunch of trophies downstairs from when I first started. I don't really have an exact number for my win column, but it was pretty this year has been definitely our roughest year. We have blown 13 motors in the oh, first yeah. half of our season. Is that in the go-karts or in the sprints? Many sprints. I really don't oh. do go-karts anymore. My okay. youngest sister now does go-karts. Okay. And, and so does she, does she race your 03? Yep, she still has the exact same stuff as I do, the yellow 03. Okay. So she races out at weekly at um either Hastings or Eagle. Okay. And what uh so what kind of championships have you won? Um, my biggest one would be the Junior Kahuna in 2007. When we went to this race, we knew nothing about it. And they were like, do you guys want to sign up for the... Just keep going. <laughs> Just keep going. <laughs> ignore us. Just You're going to have to ignore us. I do carry the biggest balls in freaking the western Nebraska. I was the first female to win a Junior Kahuna. And, and Kahuna in Hawaii means big balls. Okay. So wow. I've got big balls. <laughs> Much like ACDC. All right. Well, none of us in here have got a Kahuna, I guess. Well, that's... Uh... I'm speechless. Hey, one thing I do want to ask you is coming from the, from the cards, did that really help that transition going into the mini sprints, driving those things? Yes and no. Um, I believe I have a lot more patience and I know my right time and wrong time to pass because in go-karts, you have to be so precise. Like if you go low, you keep a line, you drift them, you make your move when you make your move. You don't just take a line and go. And then in mini sprints, most of the time, you sometimes you have two lanes or in go-karts, you will only have one lane. And in mini sprints, you got two lanes to play with. Yeah, Andrew watched me in a go kart and it was not pretty. <laughs> you were terrible, buddy. Yeah, I, I'm See, not did gonna you lie. Go from like mini sprints to go karts or something I, bigger. No, than... I started in hobby stocks in '94 and then went to go karts. I, I went to Little Sunset and Andrew's out there just laughing his rear end off because I put the go kart on the high You're side. Trying to power slide. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. yeah, it don't work very well. No. <laughs> so how long have you been racing? How old was it again? I started when I was eight years old, so I've been racing for 12 years. Holy smokes! Wow. Yeah. Hmm. I started half a season, and then after that, it was full seasons there on out. Okay, you, well, you like it now, right? I love it. Okay. <laughs> Besides go-karts and minis, what all have you raced? Um, go-karts and mini sprints is what I've raced, but in 2009, I went and did that the Tom Petty driving experience. Uh, Richard in, Petty. Yes, Richard Petty. Okay. Down in Kansas City. Okay. And I had a ton of fun with it. How'd you, Bud got into a wreck with the pace car. How did you do? No, you didn't. Yeah, I did. Yeah, he, he did. You really did? <laughs> he put it in yeah. the wall. I put the car into the wall last year. So what'd they do about it? Uh, we had to pay $32,500 for the damage. Oh, my God. I wanted Thank to you, Rich. that. Thank you, Rich. Thanks, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> so how'd, how'd you do? I mean, did um, well, when did you, you do the actual driving or did yep, you just do the ride Oh, yeah. Along? I did yeah. both. I was yeah. doing it all. Went 172 <laughs> miles per hour. Nice. Did you take your own fire suit? Yeah, no. Okay, no. Bud did. You did? <laughs> I oh, didn't yeah. really know what I was in for until he I was, got there. He was that guy in the classroom that had his own fire suit I already. Actually walked oh, no, in my fire suit. I walked in with my fire suit on. There was like 20 of them. They're like, they all just oh. looked at you, huh? Yeah, they're like, who's this hot shot? I climbed in the car, Hit popped the, the clutch, popped the clutch, and killed it four times on pit road. <laughs> then I'm going two mile an hour with the motor going 10,000 RPM. I finally get out there, made about three laps, and well, there went the other car. Oh, my God. So now nah, we're all, we're just supposed we're, to he's those. just pulling your chain. We didn't yeah. he didn't actually put oh. it well, but you did get in trouble from the pace car guy or the the driver. No, the, the lead car when you get too close, it gives you that that the yellow lights. or the lights. And I didn't realize it was another modified driver, and he didn't know that I drove modifieds. And he actually told me after the class, had he known that he had a mod driver, we would have gone a little faster. But you know, most people that go to those things have never been I've in never a cup. Drove no, so they like want to keep that. that at distance. And I'm like, go bump draft. I'm like, come on, let's go. <laughs> I mean, come on, I want to at least get in fourth gear here. So you yeah. were born and raised in Lincoln, but what what track do you call home now? Where's the mini sprint track at? You run every week. Mm, we've been doing a lot of traveling this year. We've been mainly staying at like Hastings and Sweet Springs, Missouri. And then we've run the Jay Husker series, which would be from Washington and Fairbury. Holy smokes. So you travel a lot. Yeah, we do a little bit of traveling. Well, Next year, been. we won't be traveling. With being on the road, uh, traveling so much, and, and all the racing you do, how do you handle being a mother of six? 
I am very talented. And I, I guess. got a lot of help. <laughs> that was the first thing I found on your Facebook page was the name of all of your iguanas? I have two iguanas. Well, okay. actually, I haven't updated it since then. Two of them have passed. Kahuna. Oh. Kahuna passed and Jimboria passed. Kahuna was when I won that junior Kahuna. They give you $1,000. And I had Jimboria, my other lizard. Yeah. And I wanted to get her a friend. So I bought Kahuna. So your prize money bought Kahuna. Uh-huh. With Bye, your Kahuna. with your Kahuna trophy. Yep. So got it too. <laughs> but my my iguanas stay at my grandma's house, and then I have my two snakes at home. Wow. They're do awesome. You have a, do you have a cat, a dog, anything normal? We have a, a minpin, bird? but I'm allergic to reptile or I'm allergic to fur and oh. hair and stuff. So, so you got to go with the reptiles. Yep. Huh. Hairless. Wow. <laughs> there there are fish. Yeah, they can't do anything. Tap yeah, they the are kind of boring. Well, I'm not. You're not exactly playing fetch with an iguana. You actually, they're very intelligent. Iguanas are very intelligent. They go to the bathroom in their own section. They go in water. They are, you can teach them to wave. You can teach them different words. You can walk them on a leash. So do they have like their own litter box? Yes, they do. That's wow. exactly what they have. Nice. See, I think we've all just kind of been shot shot down by, um, she's like, bring it. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about how my iguana is better than mm, your cats. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Uh, Shaylee, what what is uh, what is your favorite win uh, of all time? My favorite win. The big balls, I would think. Yep, it definitely have to be the Kahuna because yeah. we went into this Kahuna without even knowing anything about it. We got ready, we signed our names, and they go, "Do you guys want to, It's an extra twenty five dollars to do the Kahuna after the night's over." And my dad was like, "Sure, why not?" And they're like, "It pays a thousand to win," so we did, and that's how we won that. It was awesome. Is there a, another one that you think is probably one of your right up there? I'd go with um, when we won at Eagle with the World of Outlaws there doing our little segment. It, that was this year, right? Just, yep, like, that was just September a couple weeks 19th. Ago. Yeah, mention, because I had seen on Facebook that Tony Stewart was in, in, in the mini sprint race with you. Was he? He was in the 410s could, with the World of okay, Outlaws. Okay, now I knew that he was with the Outlaws, but there was people making it sound like that you were actually racing against him and he almost lapped him. Oh, and see. So I, was, I was like, Shh, mm. wow. Let's she shine did. some light on that. Did you almost lap the, the three-time NASCAR Sprint Cup we champion? We were going to have Tony get in one of our cars and do like a little green-white checker Kings Classic deal. Yeah. But he didn't want to get in one of our cars because he didn't want to risk getting hurt because he didn't know the maintenance of the cars. No, yeah, he didn't want to get beat by a girl. That's yeah. serious. Yeah. 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 That's yeah, what he's I was serious. giving it. Yep. That's, well, uh, one like, of these days. One, one of these, these days. days. Speaking of Eagle, me. speaking of Eagle, it's no secret they're going to this uh, race saver engine package. You know, and the one thing I do want to throw out here right now is you don't have to run a race saver engine package. You could take a 360. You know, you're going to restrict it down, or you can run the race saver engine package. With that being said, are you going to be in that class, and are you going to be racing weekly at Eagle next year? I will be racing weekly at Eagle for points on Saturday. But right now, we do not have a car or a motor, but I don't think we are going to be running the Race Saver package. So you'll be with a 360, 360 with, a, with restricted. the restrictor. That's so we can run other shows with the 360. Oh, that's actually smart and thinking, though. And, and it's no, I mean, the Sunday crowd that's listening to this right now, they, they may be more than NASCAR. So let's kind of give a little bit of background on what we're talking about with the Race Savers and the 305s. I uh, had Roger Hayden on several weeks ago to talk about it on our dirt track segment, Sling and Dirt, that we do. Uh, and Due to low car demand, uh, Roger has decided to get rid of the weekly 360 Sprint cars and go to the 305s, which is a much cheaper engine from what I understand. Yep. And this has caused a little bit of controversy in the three, obviously in the Sprint car world because the 360s are pretty uh, pretty historic at, at Eagle. And so uh, it, it, so you're going to be running the 360 with the restrictor on it, right? With the three, for a 305, yeah. Okay. How do you feel about the race saver? I mean, real quick, without it's going... A- it's I mean, a great idea. I mean, it's going to put a lot of drivers that couldn't drive or afford it before, and now it's affordable. Yeah. And now they can have fun, you know? Amen. It's a lot more manageable instead of spending $60,000 on a motor. I mean, think about it when they go to Knoxville, Iowa, the 360s there, how much they spend on their motor. It's ungodly. Yeah. And this, we've seen this throughout Dirt Track and NASCAR, ways of saving money. Saving money. This is a sport. This is the most costly sport in the world. I don't care what anybody says. Oh, I yeah. I mean, easily, Hands it's, it's going to cost you, I would say you guys would spend somewhere upwards of forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 a season. Easily. Just to, just to race. Easily. And that's before maintenance costs or with? That's, that's just... That's not even... Yeah. I, I would imagine you'd spend that much in I gas. I mean, it's depending, <laughs> yeah, how much you travel. Like, this year, 
since we've been traveling pretty much my whole time I've ever been racing, this will be the one time that I've ran points at a track because we are not traveling. Well, let's talk about 2013. What does it look like for you? What what do you what do you plan on doing? Are you going to make Eagle your home for 2013 or are you going to continue to travel a little bit? Um, when we get our 305, we will be making Eagle our home track. We'll be there every Saturday running for points unless it's a rain date. Yeah. You want to give a shout out to the guys and put out a warning already? Come on, oh, no. give it to them. Give it to them. Give it to them. No, um, I think I'll pass because that usually doesn't get me to. Are you too saying far. you're going to be doing a lot of passing? Yeah, Is that I what don't you're even. Saying? You know those little bumper stickers you see at the gas station saying you've just been passed by a girl? Heck, no, I don't want that on my car. That's just like saying flip me. Yeah. Uh uh-uh. uh. I don't oh. want them knowing I'm passing. Have you had? Uh, we've we've talked about this with other female drivers we've had in here. Has there been any kind of? Uh, backlash or any kind of you can you can look at it and say okay that guy's just doing it because i'm a chick have you seen that all the time since i've been growing up do you see guys race just a little bit harder because they don't want to get passed by you Uh uh-huh i like uh uh (laughs) pastrano's comments in uh, a couple of weeks ago when he started the nationwide series is i don't care just as long as i beat the girls yeah doesn't care where nobody wants to get beat by a girl does that actually psychologically make you drive harder though knowing that they're coming and running and gunning for you uh not really. I kind of really drive my line, find my space. I mean, if I don't have a first place car and I'm going backwards, I'm just going to kind of save my car and see where I'm at. I'm not going to yeah. put my car and myself out there for risk. Now, no. one, the other thing I wanted to ask you is, you know, earlier you said that when you first started, you hated it. Now you love it. Mm-hmm. At what point in time did you cross over from where I, I don't want to do this. I hate it to all of a sudden, oh, hey, this is kind of fun. I want to do this. I like it. What actually changed it is when we were racing out at um, Nebraska City, dad threw me in my car. I had no idea what was going on. And then we took the car home and we lived on a pretty empty street. I live in a cul-de-sac. And so it was pretty empty because we were the first house built. And he let me go up and down our street till I couldn't see him anymore. And he told me to turn around and I just go and make laps do 150 laps a day until I'd run out of gas. He'd fill me up and I'd just do it at my own speed, go back and forth, back and forth. And then I hit the track next weekend. They were tearing my motor down because they thought we were cheating. <laughs> there we go. I wonder wow. if Council Bluffs would let me take my mod around the block 150 <laughs> laps. You'd get Probably passed not. by yeah. a Pinto. You'd hit too much. We had the cops at our house a lot. <laughs> All for racing problems, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. The golf yeah. cart and the go karts, yeah. Hasn't what was that? Much. Just went by. Oh, I was probably Shaley, Shaley Bay again. <laughs> yep. <laughs> just head on over to her house. Well, Shaley, how can fans find you? Uh, what's your racing? What you're doing? Do you have a Facebook page, a website, or something? I do have a Facebook page. Um, it's Shaley Bay Racing 03. I haven't been updating it a lot this year, but next year it'll be updated every weekend, and it'll be a lot more on it. Yeah, you know, the one thing we haven't heard from a lot of the drivers, tell us some about your sponsors. Sponsors. All right. That, I that's am, kind of big. Yep. A little bit. Um, Andrew doesn't have any. <laughs> I really They're hard don't. to get. <laughs> They're hard to get, especially with the economy the way it is now. It's rough. But um, we are not sponsored by the Army. My, I thought you still were. We've never been sponsored by the Army. We do it to support our troops. My mom has oh. been in the Army for 30 years. Oh, wow. And so nine years ago, we started doing the Army cars for my mom. And so ever since then, it's always been the U.S. Army car. But my sponsor is where I work. They MDR Racing Customs sponsors me. Have and you my had, dad. Have you actually in the past seen a lot of service personnel coming over to the car just because they see that? A lot. We've had a lot of it. Um, when we went to Fairbury for a Jay Husker, they had a fair going on mm-hmm. and they had a rocket launcher and they had the armies guys out there and they're all telling about this rocket launcher. And they were like, oh, we're racing right up here. And they're like, oh, bring your army car down. And so we were like, OK. So I went up and got my army car and brought it down, driving really close to the rocket launcher. Hit the wing with my door. <laughs> I was like, great. <laughs> Pulled her on in, parked it. I was like, yeah, it's pretty embarrassing. Oh, wow. Wow. Uh, <laughs> and the rocket launcher. And did I, did I see right that you're a mechanic there? Yep. At your job? So you work on the cars yourself? Yep, I work She's on cars. She's more of a man doing... than you, Dan. Well, I can see that easily. We... <laughs> <laughs> kind of a girly man. Um, but uh, what I wanted to say was there there are a lot of drivers out there that don't work on their own cars. Do you find the advantage to being able to work on your own car, understanding how everything works, and being able to set up your own car? 
What's really funny is my dad really doesn't like me working on my cars. So we have a pit crew chief and other people who do it. So as soon as I come in, he tells me what he sees. I tell him what I feel, what I want changed on the car. And then from there, everybody else kind of is hands on. So you feel like having that knowledge of knowing how the car works, you're able to understand, be able to communicate better. Right. And that helps a ton. Yeah, I can imagine that would. Well, thank you so much for joining us. You're going to stick around for turn four, right? Yes, I am. All right, we'll be right back. That was Shaylee Bade. You can find her again on Facebook. Where at? Shaylee Bade Racing 03. All right, check her out. And uh, she'll be running at Eagle all next year as the weekly uh, series. So this is the Front Stretch presented by Joe's Karting on AM590, Omaha's ESPN Radio. This is the Front Stretch on AM590, brought to you by Joe's Carding, online at joescarding.com. Well, we're getting the signal of one to go as we head into turn four on the front stretch. Salvage by Kaziski Auto Parts. You're looking for quality used parts to get your car or truck back on the road. Give an experienced salesperson a call today at Kaziski Auto Parts, 731-4592. You can also stop by 50th and I Street. It's your way of fixing your car and not paying outrageous prices at either the dealership or a aftermarket store because they will gouge you. Kaziski Auto Parts gives you quality used parts backed up by a full lifetime warranty. Team PRP, give Andrew or any one of the salespeople a call today, 731-4592. Let's talk to Andrew in the infield report. Andrew, your favorite driver won last weekend. Uh, no, my uh, my favorite driver actually finished seventh. Oh, not not so great. So, But let's talk about that. Uh, the big mix-up in the points. I'll just break it down here real quick for us. Matt Kansas, 12th. Greg Biff, 11th. Jeff Gordon is 10th. Kevin Harvick, 9th. Martin Truex, Jr., 8th. Dale Jr. is 7th. Casey Kane, 6th. Tony Stewart, top 5. Clint Boyer, 4th. Denny Hamlin, 3rd. Jimmy Johnson, 2nd. And Horseface, leading the show right now. And <laughs> He's looking pretty good, but you know what? He got lucky last week. That's all I got to say. I got to completely disagree with you. The way he has been running, I think that team has got the Mighty Mo on their side. And they've gotten the golden horseshoe that we've talked about. Kevin Harvick joked about it a couple of years ago. They are making the decisions. They're taking risks, and it's paying off for them. Who would have ever thought you'd have gone 90 green flag laps at Dover when your pit window, your green flag window is what? uh, About 85. Yeah. So he went an extra. Yeah, it's about 80. So he went an extra five laps. And uh, on top of that, he didn't run it light. When he when once he got to the front, he did run it. Uh, talk about Brad Keselowski. He did ease off the throttle, and NASCAR did warn them with a couple of laps to go. Him and Johnson were under race pace, so they were warned by NASCAR to pick up the pace, or they'd be uh-huh. black flagged. But uh, an amazing job saving gas and and Brad Keselowski and Paul Wolf. If they don't win this championship, it's something traumatic is going to have to happen, and it might happen today at Talladega. And you know, this is the place it's going to be. I, it's going to be a fun race. This is where everything gets screwed up. Carl Edwards last year, this race, he didn't run good enough, and it costed him the championship. Dega can screw anybody you over. You know, as, as good as Keselowski is looking right now, you really got to be taking Jimmy Johnson pretty serious. Because one thing I've noticed over the last few weeks here, the top three, four, or five guys, they've been switching back and forth. But the one guy who's been consistent week in and week out, Jimmy Johnson is. We all know. I think this is his worst finish, a fourth. Uh, it is. Uh, last uh, at, uh, let's but, see, at New Hampshire, what, what he finished second. At uh, Chicagoland, he finished second. But what I was getting at is right now, Jimmy Johnson is not sitting that bad at all because he's running so consistent. You could win all the races, but if you have one or two bad wreck or one or two bad finishes, even in the chase, Keselowski finishes 20th or some, Jimmy Johnson's going to be right there. Brad's looking good. Best season ever. But I still think Jimmy Johnson's going to sneak by him there at the end. The thing that Jimmy Johnson has on his side is that word you said. It's consistently. They are consistently good. I think Jimmy Johnson is one of the few drivers that could go through the chase and not even win a race and still have a really good chance at winning the championship. Now, okay. I, got, I got a question real quick because I've had three people ask me this. Do you guys think Knauss and Johnson are scared of Keselowski right now? Because a lot of people are saying they are. I go, there ain't no way. There ain't no, no way. Five times no. you're scared of anybody. I think they're going to keep an extra eye on him. I mean, it's just like you guys. When you guys go to your tracks and you know there's a good driver there, you're not necessarily scared of them, but that you're keeping an eye on them and paying attention to, to maybe what and they're doing. Andrew, you're absolutely right. A five-time champion, what do they have to be? They've already proven beyond a doubt what they can do. With that being said, right now in the chase, who's on that bubble? Who's got to do something today 
or they have no shot at anything. We're right there. Where Kane and Stewart are sitting, those guys are about it. I don't think yeah, anybody I, else behind them is going to I'm go. thinking Hamlin Boyer. No. No, I, I, you can... Okay, it's Dega still. It once we get past Dega, I think you can you can start to say if you're back more than back twenty points, boy, you're in trouble. But because of Talladega, because of the fact that you could wreck on lap one or you could wreck on lap two ninety, and you would have just as yep. big of a hit. I mean, at Dover, if you wrecked on the last lap, you're probably still going to finish in the top twenty. At Talladega, if you wreck on the last lap, you're probably going to finish outside of the top twenty-five. Andrew, you're Johnson or you're Hamlin. You're at Talladega. Do you take it easy the first half of the race, or do you get up on the wheel and you try to lead the whole thing and win the whole thing? I mean, obviously you want to win it, but do you kind of take it easy with this big restrictor plate race? There was two people last year I watched was Stewart and Edwards, and I was at the race. Stewart ran the top five the whole race. Edwards ran about 20th the whole race. Look what happened. Stewart wins the points because he finished up front, and Edwards didn't. I like Jimmy's going to be up front. I like Hendrick's plan. Stay in the back, in the backpack, take care of your car, but the safest place to be at Talladega is front. Is right up front, P1. That is the uh, that is the only safe place to be because there is nobody in front of you that can wreck you. That is the only safe place to be, but it is incredibly difficult at Talladega and Daytona to stay P1. You, you can't do it. So Fair enough. Um, Shaylee, let's talk to you a little bit about Talladega uh, have uh, what do you think I mean you're kind of a NASCAR fan can you weigh in a little bit here as far as what do you think about Talladega today I watched to see how Danica finished make sure she didn't win my first NASCAR race <laughs> and then I watched so Tony you're, Stewart you're going to be the first female of the new era to win a NASCAR race that is my big plan all right I was happen. furious when I heard Danica was in NASCAR yeah. she should have just stayed in Indy and I'd be perfectly okay you know I gotta be honest with you I I think Jennifer Jo Cobb down in the nationwide series has got a lot more talent than than Danica and, does I completely agree. Yeah, I think she's paid her dues, but you know, let's let's face it. This it's isn't a, this is a day of age where talent makes about thirty five to forty percent of your ticket. The rest of it is sponsorship and marketability. Yep. I That's, will say, there's one girl out there. You guys probably don't know who she is. Named Natalie Sather. She's probably the best female racer out there. Where's right? she racing at? She races sprints she all over, but now she's doing ARCA, trucks. I think. Is she in the she's trucks now? She's doing the trucks. That's what she announced at um, the Chili Bowl. There you go. Natalie awesome. Sather, watch for her. Well, keep an eye ear out for her, because hopefully we'll see her up in the uh, in the Cup Series one of these days. Um, I don't want to do predictions for Talladega, because that's a complete crapshoot. Well, let's face it, it's a complete crapshoot. I mean, your driver could be taken out, and you could have the best... You, the, qual- the guy who gets the pole at Talladega could be taken out any time of the day. So... Uh, well, why? He's in P1. He's up front. But the fact is that it's hard to stay up in P1. That's the safest place to be, but it's hard to stay up in the in the, in the the lead. Uh, and, and if you get mixed back, you get out of the draft, you get shuffled back, you're, you could be done for. You could be, I right. mean, you can lose 20 positions just getting out of the draft. With quickly. that being said, real quick, are you racing anywhere or are you done for the season? <laughs> I believe we are about done. Okay, so you guys, the season's pretty much wrapping up? Yep, pretty much. Are you going to come out to the uh, Cornhusker Classic at, at IE? Have a few brews, you watch Buddy come. Ray and me. Yeah, Bring him. The slow I guys? Think, I think we'll come out. Yes. Oh. I'll be there on Friday. We'll definitely come out. I'll be there on Friday. Your dad's a little mad at me and I'm not going to make it on Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, I know. I told two little girls I'd take them to a pumpkin patch. I can't back out of my nieces. So. <laughs> I can grow pumpkins. We can do it. I, what if, what listen, if this Andrew is not, not the kind of a show to be pumpkins. talking about that stuff. <laughs> All right, let's wrap it up. Talladega just a few hours away. Guys, is Brad Kozlowski going to be leading in the points when he leaves Talladega today? No. No. No? Okay. I, <sighs> Jimmy Jesus. will be. You think Jimmy's back up there? All yeah. right. I'm thinking Hamlin. Um, next week, we're going to sit down, and we're still efforting it, but we should be able to sit down with Pat Warren, president of uh, Kansas Speedway. Kansas comes up right after Talladega, so we're going to talk with Pat about the changes at Kansas, some of the different stuff they've got going on, ticket packages, ticket prices, hotels, all that different stuff. We'll sit down with Pat, uh, one of my favorite guests that come on the show every year and talks with us, Kansas Speedway. Uh, we'll also recap what happens at Talladega and Charlotte, and i got to tell you, if you've ever had a show – you want to tune in for you're gonna want to tune in for next weekend's show because i will be the only one that is still sober (laughs) we're gonna be live next weekend and it's gonna be wrapping up right after racing we're gonna basically take off after you guys quit drinking uh on saturday night at the corner class since i haven't missed a show and this might be if brad keselowski wins this week 
I'll definitely be there. If he doesn't, it's an iffy. <laughs> <laughs> so no guarantee that, that Andrew's going to be there. So join us next weekend. We'll be back. We're going to recap Talladega. We're going we're gonna to talk about uh, Charlotte also because those are the two races that are going to happen. Uh, Charlotte, obviously, on Saturday night. So uh, Plus, we're going to preview what's going to go on at Kansas, and we'll talk with Pat Warren from Kansas Speedway. Thanks so much, Shaley, for joining us. We appreciate you sitting down and sharing everything with us. Again, what's your Facebook page so people can uh, follow you? Shaley Bade Racing 03. I almost said stock. That's it for the front stretch. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Check us out on the front stretch presented by Joe's Carding. Find us on Facebook. We keep you up to date with all the latest news, poll questions, posts, all sorts of fun stuff. The front stretch presented by Joe's Carding. That is our website page. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Have yourself a great day. This is the front stretch presented by Joe's Carding.